kind of think some of those item frames might get destroyed. A little worried about it. We'll see though, we'll see. So, hello and welcome back everybody. This is Etho, and today, if you look at the title of this episode, I actually have a clear project in mind. <laughs> We're not just doing a hundred random things. No, we gotta get to it today. I got so many like parts to this project we got to get through. We're going to be we're going to be moving it, trekking it. Mhm. Mm but first let's explain the project a little bit. So as you know in this series, there tends to be two ethos that you that you see, right? Normally, when it comes to farm building, you get simple etho. You know, what do I actually need in this game? How how do I get resources quickly? What's practical and efficient and easy to understand and for you guys to copy? That's usually who shows himself, right? But then every once in a while, I get an idea and I just want to get ridiculous with it. How far can we push it? What is the ultimate enchanting system? Now, to be honest with you, I actually don't know the answer to the question. I think what we're going to do today is going to get us pretty close to the ultimate, but it's a hard thing to define, really. Like, if you think about it, I have already built the ultimate enchanting system twice now. We're standing by the first one right here. When we first made the world... This was peak enchanting back in the time. I had the idea of moving bookshelves around with pistons because before it was common practice to block the bookshelves with torches when you needed to lower the levels on the enchanting table, right? If we step forward in time a few years here, it brings us over to the library where we built the new ultimate enchanting system. We still use this one to the day. This is our current best system. And honestly, it's still decent, right? It's, it's okay but it's definitely showing its age. This is something we definitely want to copy. Instead of us going to find the books, we bring the books to us. Are we all out of everything? Punch? Oh, I heard that one. That one came out. I think the system might be low. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, it doesn't come up here. It comes up over here. I knew that. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. so we got ourselves a punch two buck out of nowhere. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. Luck of the sea. Now the problem is, let's say I go to the anvil and it's like, oh, I don't have the levels for this or I don't have the tool for this. There's no tools around to put the enchantments on. That's something that could be improved. Um, let's say I don't have the levels either. Guess what? I can't put it back. <laughs> I just got to throw it on the ground or else I have to go up to our system and and try to manually do it here. Oh no, okay, so I just found out there's actually a glitch with this thing. It's not that it's out of books. They're getting stuck in the water because the items float in water now when they didn't when we built this. Another big issue, when we built this, I did not think we would ever get new enchantments in the game. But we've got plenty. And there's no spot for the new ones. Like, there's no mending spot on this thing. Uh, also, storage is somewhat limited in this. We got three double chests, basically. I've had times where i filled it up and then it's like, okay, what do I do with the books? You guys always wonder why I don't use the redstone room. It's because Etho never cleans up when he's done with something, and I gotta clean up every time I wanna use it. All right, well, I'm excited. Let's get started on this thing, shall we? So our grand goal with this, besides what we talked about already, is gonna be the delivery system. This is where we waste the most time, is dealing with the enchanted books. We want it to be as simple as possible, and I think I have come up with something incredibly simple um, once it's all done. Building it is going to be tough. <laughs> so I, my plan is to have all the max level enchanted books in two shulker boxes. So each of these will be a unique enchanted book arranged in alphabetical order. Uh, currently in the game, I think there's 39 different ones. So we're going to have to split it into two shulker boxes. So one will probably be for tools. One will be for armor. And then we'll have 15 spots left for any future enchantments that might come out. And the idea is, let's say we want to put Impaling on a Trident, we can take that out. If we change our mind, we can easily put it back in. Unlike that other system we have, right? Um, that's no problem. Let's say we put Impaling on our Trident, then we want to do another Trident, and uh-oh! There's no more Impaling books in the system, because we, uh, we use the only one, right? So the idea is we're going to have a button by our Shulker box. As we press it, it instantly switches from this Shulker box to a brand new one full of all the enchantments again, and it'll be back there. So there'll be no waiting time. Everything will be at our fingertips. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Awesome. Okay, so it sounds pretty simple, right? Not too much to it. Well, we're going to get into why it's not so simple, actually. Uh-huh. So if you think about it, we can't guarantee the books are what we think they are because they are non-stackable items. We can't put them in item filters and figure out what they are exactly. 
all we can really do is remember the position they're in. Uh, now, thankfully, there is a way to ensure stuff goes in a, the position we want nice and easy here. So if you put um, items in hoppers like this and you run a minecart underneath, you guarantee pick up the first item in the hopper. Nice and simple. So there should be exactly five in here. There is, and they got picked up in the order uh, of the hoppers. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. So that's how we can get the position right. The tricky thing is, like, let's say respiration is in position four here. What happens if we use efficiency four on our gear, and then we try to return these back to the system? It doesn't know that book is missing when it goes into the hoppers. So this all kind of gets moved forward out of position. <laughs> and it's like, oh, the respiration went into the efficiency four spot instead. That's not what we want, right? And we don't want to just like delete the enchanted books after like some enchantment enchanted books are hard to get like swift sneak i'm not deleting those every time um we got actually have to return them to the system in the right order and not only is that going to be a problem when we return the books to the system it's going to be a problem even when we get them from the system because what if we run out of one of the types of books in the system there, there's nothing in that middle hopper there well then what happens well when we run the minecart underneath we're not going to get five books we're only going to get four and after that gap there, they get shifted out of position by one. So how on earth are we going to return them in the right order? <laughs> We're just going to pop into the end here real quick. I got some fishermen set up here just outside of the blast radius now. Man, that thing reaches so far. I was surprised. Still got to move those chests. But uh, yeah, we got some fishermen selling cod in the end now. And uh, you guys were so confused last episode. Etho, why not just use chickens? <laughs> Can I be different, guys? Come on. Let me be different, please. Uh, it's also because I want the buckets. Why AFK at my iron farm when I can just play the game and get buckets a different way? And it turns out we're going to be using a ton of buckets with this project because they are the solution to our positional problem here. So in this example, I'm going to use this to show you what I mean. Uh, we got two in all the hoppers except the middle one only has one. Now we should have picked up five books like we were expecting but the middle one no longer has any enchanted books in. So what has happened is the comparator has gone off here, which has unlocked the hopper below. And now when it passes by, if there's no enchanted books, it instead picks up a water bucket and it goes into the correct spot. So now these are all in the correct position still. And this is like a filler item. We're going to use the exact same trick when returning books to the system. Let's say there's a couple gaps in there. Before we send these books back to the storage minecart, uh, we're going to inject them with water buckets. It'll fill up any empty spots so that the position is saved on all the books. We got the plan. Now we got to do some redstone. Okay, so the first thing we got to figure out here, when we return the enchanted books back to the system, some of these might be water buckets that we injected into there, right? So how do we remove the water buckets so they don't get mixed with our books? I think we got to use something like this. So we get uh, an item filter below the dispenser. If we put a water bucket in, it ejects the water and that bucket goes down below into the filter. If it's an enchanted book, it just shoots out into the other hoppers. So that way they are separated. And I think if there's water there already, it should just eject the water again. Yeah, now we have three in there. All right, it's very good. I've been uh, tinkering with the redstone and I think we got something working here. It just looks a little bit weird. <laughs> but yeah, it, this should separate the buckets from the enchanted books. The buckets end up going down here in the item filter while the books end up getting ejected and falling into wherever we put the hopper. And it seems to be consistent. If we put a bunch in at a time, it doesn't mess up. So what we're doing is we're detecting with this comparator whenever something is in the dispenser, and then it just loops back on itself and ejects the item. And then this is just an item filter down here. It just looks a little funny because I spaced it out to make it work. Aha. Uh -huh. And then we just have it running two blocks long instead of the usual three, so we don't need as many buckets to fill up the system to get it going. And then uh, we're going to send them down to a hopper and a minecart will come by to pick them up. Good stuff. All right. I think we're about ready to get started on this thing. I've been gathering up some supplies. Tons of redstone components. It's going to be a very expensive build. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I think one more key element to our enchanting system. Like if we wanted to have any chance of being considered ultimate by people, um, I think it needs to have like infinite storage for the enchanted books. Like we never have to worry about it running out just a ridiculous amount of storage space um 
And in order to do that, I'm going to try to combine a shulker loader with a shulker unloader. So we're going to have to design those as well. I have an old shulker loader here. I built back when they first came out, the shulker boxes. So I'm going to see if I can look at this and maybe try to improve it. Like copy this and then see if we can make it any better. Cool, cool. All right, we have made it out to that new area where we've been working on the villager trading system. This is where we're also going to be putting the enchanting system. So I've uh, been doing some digging here, expanding out. This is going to be like our main room I'm planning. Like this is where the enchanting table is going to be. This is where we're going to get the books delivered to us. This is where we're going to be spending most of our time. Uh, but the actual like system for storing the books and for getting them organized is not going to be in this room. It's going to be attached to it like a big long tunnel, I think over here. And that's what we're going to be working on today. I don't know if you've been following the 1.20 update, but there's some pretty cool stuff coming out in there. And one of the big ones, spoiler, spoiler, skip ahead 30 seconds if you don't want to know, is the armor trim. Aha. So I want to actually build a room attached to this as well for the new armor stuff coming out like a big nice armory with uh tools in there as well that works well with an enchanting area right to have uh, that stuff nearby so we're gonna be like building like a big complex here almost i said complex okay it's definitely not a base but before we can advance any further here we do actually need to figure out exactly what our redstone is going to be how big is it going to be what's the shape all that stuff needs to be known before i get into full-scale building here so let's try uh, figure out what we're doing with the loader first. So I made a replica of the one in the nether here. I'm already starting to see some weird things about it. Like, why is there so much delay on the repeaters? I don't know. <laughs> why is there an observer here? I have no idea. I've been trying to figure this out. I think it does nothing. Uh, but okay. Uh, so I'm just like trying to get a grasp of what we need to do here. Uh, shulker loaders are actually quite simple. All you really need is somewhere to input the items. So we're putting it in from the side here. We need to detect when the box is full. So we use the comparator behind here to do that. When it's full, we tell the piston to extend. That breaks it. And then we tell the dispenser to let out an empty one. And that's pretty much all you need. This one has a way of locking the hopper as well so that the items don't drain out of the box as it's uh, filling up. But that's actually not super necessary. I think we can remove this whole wire here. And then instead, like it will, now that it's not locked, the items will start to flow down. But we could just uh, lower the hopper by one. And then it's not touching the box. All right. <laughs> so that's one optimization. The tunnel we're going to be building here is going to be 27 blocks long times however fat our redstone devices are. So if this thing is three blocks chunky... <laughs> 27 times 3 is how long the tunnel needs to be. I want to try to get this down to two blocks wide um, so we can compact things quite a bit more. So to do that, we're going to move our filler from the side here to the front. This comparator gets a signal strength of 15 from the redstone block, and it's in subtract mode. So when the other comparator gets a strength of 15, when the shulker box is full, you get 15 minus 15 equals 0. That allows the redstone to turn off, this torch turns on, and it activates the piston dispenser. That's how it works. Uh, so, <laughs> to compact this, this is going to be a little tricky though, because we can't uh, just put another torch to continue the pattern here. You won't be able to change that, right? The redstone will always keep it powered. Uh, so, the trick here is going to be to get rid of the redstone block and use something else that can give a strength of 15 to the comparator. If we fill this up with items, it'll do that. But we can also control the redstone on top of the barrel because it's not powered. The original design here used the sticky piston and a slab to break the shulker box, which allows you to open the shulker box, but we don't really need that functionality with this. So to compact it more, we'll just use a regular piston. Uh, we don't need the observer here. And I'm going to try and bring the comparator one block closer because we don't need this gap there. I think that was for looks. Why don't we do this? Get rid of all this. That's unnecessary. Just get a torch by the piston. I think that's about it. Oh, you know, we need one more redstone here. Oh, snappers. It actually works, everybody. I'm super happy with it. It's it's so tiny. Look at this thing. Load it up with some items here. They flow in. Uh, I don't think we could really improve this anymore unless we go like one wide tileable. But I don't really want to mess with, around with that. That'll take way longer to figure out. Um, but yeah, it, it 
breaks it and places a new one just like we want and then the full one gets placed down here uh-huh so the barrel and the glass here is just temporary until the pattern repeats but otherwise it's too wide tileable and I gotta build 54 of these today, so it's, I'm happy we can get it a little bit smaller like this. This is a pretty redstone heavy episode, so just so we don't drag it out too long, I decided to design the unloader off camera. And look at it! Look at it! It's so compact! It's one white table. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy with this too. Okay, yeah, um, how did I get it so small? You might be wondering. Etho, are you a genius? No, I am a cheater. That's what's happening here. Yeah, so this is, uh an unloader but it's not like a true unloader okay so instead of reading the comparator from the shulker box like you usually do i'm reading the barrel below so this is a shulker unloader on demand if that makes sense it's i'm still kind of getting my head around it myself uh so if the barrel empties then it will unload the next shulker box and if i take the items out of here too quickly though it might mess it up, is what I've kind of learned. Uh, still testing it. But yeah, basically when it runs out, we get more, right? If I empty it totally, what happens? They'll break it prematurely, right? Yeah. Yep, yep. So the plan here is to link our shulker loader with our unloader. So this will store our enchanted books into shulker boxes, and they'll be nice and compressed. We can store the full ones in chests, and then we pump those chests into the unloader. Right, and then as we start to run out of enchanted books, it'll automatically refill it. So it's like tons and tons of storage, right? <laughs> By combining the two, it's really cool. Oh me, oh my, what have we got ourselves into here, everybody? Check it out, we got ourselves one segment of the device built, one out of 27, and hopefully uh, this is starting to give you a sense of the scale of the project, because <laughs> it's definitely a hit home for me now. It's going to take a bit of time. A lot of grinding and digging and uh, collecting resources and all that fun stuff. But I think it's going to be super cool when it's done here. So let me uh, run you through just how all this interacts with each other. We got the main tunnel over here. This is where we can actually enter ourselves and interact with our uh, enchanting device if we want. Our storage part of it. So over here we'll be able to pick up our, our enchanted books like uh, we saw with our unloader there, right? Uh, up above here is where the shulkers containing enchanted books will be, the compressed version, basically. And then up here is if we ever want to individually drop off enchanted books, we can here as well. And they'll go into the compressor and then into the uncompressor below. Um, so when we want to load it up with storage, we put it in here manually. We're going to have automatic ways of doing it as well. So that's where the top section here is for. I decided let's get one of each type of librarian into the system so we will have electrons at the top here there's going to be a hopper so that when we trade with the villager let's say we're getting mending we throw the mending books in the hopper and then i don't need to run around organizing them or figuring out where they need to go it's just it's just going to be here and said and done right <laughs> they'll go into the compressor and then into the uncompressor aha uh -huh. So that'll make this so much simpler. Originally, I was planning on putting our librarians in this uh, main area with the villagers and trying to get perfect librarians, but I realized it's just going to be way better and way easier to just get one of each librarian for each type of uh, enchanted book in the game up there. Aha. So that's what we're going to be doing. And then our redstone, we looked at our three main devices here already, but I'll just run you through it quickly. We got our device for removing the water buckets from our enchanted books then those get fed into our shulker loader system and then those get fed into our shulker unloader system aha uh -huh. yeah so the two sides are going to be perfect mirrors of each other but one side is going to be dedicated to our tool enchantments and the other side to our armor enchantments and then each side also has six main rail lines for picking up and dropping off the items in the system so let's go over those real quick as well so these rail lines are going to run down the entire length of the tunnel and they'll cross by 27 different hoppers. Um, so this one down here is for our enchanted books that come from our unloader. Um, so it'll cross by, it'll pick up 27 different enchanted books on its way down the tunnel here. Those get delivered from the storage minecart, probably put into a shulker box and that, that, that shulker box gets delivered to us at our anvil in our enchanting area. 
that we can use to put uh, the enchanted books on our gear. Now, when we're done with that box and we want to send it back to the system, what we're going to do is fill any gaps with the water buckets and then put the contents into a storage minecart again. And then that storage minecart is going to run at this rail line at the top here. So there's going to be a rail line running down here. Uh, this hopper is where we send the enchanted books and water buckets mix that we're done with. And then that enters into our dewater buckinator <laughs> over there, right? Uh, the empty buckets from the dewater buckinator uh, get picked up over there from another rail line. So this will be empty buckets on that line, right? Those will get sent to a bucket filler. So we got to get them filled again. And then they get delivered down below here uh, into this hopper. I have to build the rail line for that still. But yeah, this uh, this hopper will have our water buckets in. So if this is empty, this hopper gets unlocked and it'll pick up a bucket instead of a book uh, using this uh, piston mechanism to lock or unlock it. Okay. The other thing is shulker boxes. So we have empty shulker boxes from our unloader in this hopper. So this rail line gets those. And then it delivers the empty ones up to the top there. And that runs down to the dispenser and that uh, gives the shulker boxes to our shulker loader. All right, so hopefully that made sense to you. Usually I like to show you guys instead of tell you guys, but uh, in this case, I kind of suspect we're not gonna get it all done this episode. So I figured I'd go over the whole plan with you instead, uh, just so you aren't left hanging on the project, how it's gonna work and all that. But yeah, it is time to get to digging. I'm gonna see how much we can get done on this episode. This might seem weird, but this is actually my favorite part of any project. The grind, I love the grind of getting stuff done. When I can shut off my brain, I can load up YouTube and start watching videos or listening to music or, you know, just having a good time playing Minecraft and chilling. That, that's what it's all about, right? Two, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. That's our length right there. Very good. So we got a big chunk of the digging done now, but we're going to have to take a break from it and go do a resource run. Uh, look at this. <laughs> I wasn't sure how the dark oak was going to look. Like, I'm not so worried about the ground. We can easily add in some other colors on the ground. But the walls, having the dark oak, stripped dark oak, we definitely need a lot more variety than just the, the solid brown all the way down. So that is something I'm going to have to figure out. We got this dug out over here, uh, and then down below we got the, the main tunnel dug. And uh, likewise, we're going to have another problem with too much dark oak if we run it all the way down here. So I have to think of something, something a little bit more interesting. Okay, first stop here, we're going to pay a visit to the brown mushroom farm. It's been a while since we last did a harvest here. I want to add a liner to the redstone room out of uh, the brown mushroom blocks, kind of like we did over here. Like, I like to use them as a background material instead of... Uh, you know, just having random stone and diorite and that kind of thing showing. I think it gives it a little bit more of a polished finished look, even though it's not really much effort. Um, so let's do it. Let's uh, see if this thing still works. It should. Uh, step one, plant. Step two, grow. Step three, harvest. Step four, collect. So it automatically should have planted itself. So we go on to grow. See if they work here. Yep, they're all popping up. <laughs> I really like this farm. Like... You know, I built it originally for fuel, because you could you could put uh, brown mushroom blocks in furnaces, but honestly, I like the block itself uh, for building as well quite a bit. So I'm actually getting a decent amount of use out of it. We're just running through now to break all the stems. And then finally, we hit the collect button, and that should uh, wash everything down the holes. Something else I really like in our world here is this well in Sandy City. It's so satisfying when you want to go to the nether just to jump in a hole. And you just you just get put into the portal. I kind of get the impression that you guys liked it when I show you around the world a little bit more every episode. So I'm trying to get into that habit a, a bit more. Uh, we haven't been to the mining mesa together in a very long time. I come here quite often myself. Off camera, you know. But uh, yeah, if you haven't seen it in a while, this is how we're looking. This is where I get all my clay from. Oh, that's not down there. I go over to, down into the beacon area. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is all mined out. What else we got down here? I haven't been here in a long time, actually. I did a big mining trip a long time ago, and uh, it's finally starting to run out. 
All right, everybody. Well, I figured I better record the outro here before it gets much later because I am really struggling to keep my eyes open at this point. I have pretty much built as long as I can for this episode. So we're going to wrap it up here. This is how far we got, though. We got uh, the unloader built on one side and just about all the terrain cleared out. So we're making progress a little bit. <laughs> it's a big project. Uh-huh. Anyways, let's, uh, oh yeah, and I did the lining on the one side. So I don't know. This is something I'm sort of doing every once in a while. I think I like it, but I'm not entirely sure. What do you guys think about this? Like, I, I like to line, like, unimportant areas with mushroom blocks. Like, you know, when I, I do a world tour or something, or you happen to see the redstone behind the curtain, I don't like to see, like, stone and iron ore sticking out, granite, diorite. I want it to look like it's finished and it's also like a barrier so that when I'm digging around I don't accidentally you know dig through a lake and then spill water down on my redstone or something like that it, it, there's a little bit of extra reason to it but I I don't know <laughs> it's late I'm having trouble forming thoughts okay let's uh let's get to the comment of the day it says so is he just not using stone bricks for redstone anymore longtime fans will know Hello from Tennessee. I got caught last episode putting redstone on end stone. Mm-hmm. Big mistake. Big mistake. Usually if I do that, it's because it's temporary, right? If you ever see me doing redstone on dirt, it's either I have lost my mind or it's just temporary. <laughs> yeah, because... So here, here's my rules for redstone. I don't put redstone on dirt because in my world, endermen, those little jerks, you know, they like to move the blocks around, right? So if you have redstone on dirt, they will actually break your redstone devices. So it's very important you don't put it on dirt or anything like that. Um, I don't turn off uh, mob griefing in my world just because I like to try to keep things vanilla, by the way. People always bring that up. Um, the other thing is... Uh, Wow, I am so tired. <laughs> uh, where am I going with this? Yes, uh, the stone bricks. So that's my default for redstone because you can easily just mine the stone you're working at and then boom, you got stone bricks, right? So that's my lazy thing. But my actual preferred thing for redstone is the cyan uh, terracotta. Um, that's why we actually went to go collect some there because I knew I'd need a bunch for this. I like the cyan because it is close in color to... A lot of redstone uh, components like the pistons and the observers and stuff i don't usually want my redstone to stick out too much i wanted it to be more of a background thing and also the clay if i ever change my mind or need to undo something it's an instant mind block and easy to collect anyways hopefully you enjoyed today's episode thank you for watching until the next one take care have a good day bye bye